comic book look after hours straight from the pages of a comic book look you guys know the drill john aka the digital don juan aka the comic book hugh hefner aka the pumpkin pie of all things literary with these glasses on so snazzy and with me today we have what do we do here at a comic book look after hours you guys know the drill we talk to awesome comic book creators and awesome comic book creators we visit with Today, joining me all the way from the UK is going to be our guest. Introduce. Let's let's introduce yourself here. Who who are you, and what are we talking about today? Hello, my name's Kate Wolf, and I am the web comic author of Dante or Dante the Vampire. Mm. To just give it more specifics. Mm. Um, I've never read before. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And uh, with that, uh, Kate, I uh, did want to just point out that Dante was, first of all, it caught my eye really quick. Because your first question to me was, uh, does this apply to webcomics? When I put yeah, out, you know, the tweet. a lot of people, like webcomics, people like to say people interested in comics aren't interested in webcomics. So you find sometimes that people just write it off as a medium, which is a shame because there are a lot of really good webcomics out there. Yeah. And that, that's uh, definitely something, you know, and it's, it's funny because I'm a cubicle warrior at work, you know, so um, having the chance to kind of read these kinds of fun things, because this is something that I actually did, I was able to check out like on my phone, I just wanted to test run it, and I just thought that was so handy to be able to read it really wherever, you know, yeah. um, having it available like that is awesome, and especially with our go, go, go generation that we're in, uh, <laughs> you're definitely, uh, you know, making it available in the right mediums. So yeah, that exactly. I find like a lot of comics you can get on like sort of the um, Apple tablets and stuff as well now. <laughs> so I just uh, I did appreciate that. Um, all right. Um, so let's let's kind of talk about first of all let's talk about you. Um, do you do you read like what's on the shelf every Wednesday? Are you a Superman girl or are you kind of do you read like different kinds of things or what are you into? Um, I think I started reading comic books in high school, which sort of, for me, was about sort of 15. My English teacher introduced us to them as a medium. They had, like, a really cool English teacher. Yeah. And he introduced us to a guy called Terry Moore, who writes Strange in Paradise. He's an American author. And from that, I just sort of fell in love with it, because before then, I'd always thought comic books were just kind of like, you know, Superman, Batman. That was all there was. Yeah. So I kind of fell in love with the independence sort of the sort of the stories that really were sort of just the general down to earth stories of comics. So I sort of went out and most of the stuff that I read is sort of very independently done. I haven't I, I've read some of sort of the Batman stuff and I'd like it, but yeah. my favourite definitely I love sort of um Craig Thompson who writes sort of blankets and chunky rice. It's very kind of emotional writing that he's got going on and it's, it's like and I love it when it's sort of got such beautiful artwork as well like with real creativity and um, there's an English author as well called Brian Talbot and he does lots of stuff sort of set in England as well and it's sort of his stuff deals with really deep issues as well like that you don't it's it can be quite difficult to find that sort of in your comics sometimes like they go sort of that deep uh -huh. And then my camera's just gone crazy. Again. <laughs> That's all right. Yeah. That's totally I'll right. that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so then that you know, this is something where I'm, you know, we're obviously not very familiar with it. Um, the you know, because you said it was set in England. Uh, so, are is there like a huge local scene out there kind of thing? People are doing their own thing, or not that I've been able to find, to be honest. Like most of the comic book guys I find are all in America. I think even on sort of the uh, website I use for hosting my webcomic, I find most of the people on there are American. Okay. So obviously we have like forums, we chat to each other about, you know, sort of, do you think this is good, is this working, yeah. you know, we, it's really good of sort of place to get advice from people. Yeah. And you know, like, 
everyone's American. Yeah. Uh, there's, a few, there's a few, like, good English people out there, but it's just not really been embraced in England like it has in the Americas. It's just like conventions. The only way you're going to get to a comic convention here is in London. Yeah. And it's like once a year. Yeah. Like, where in America, it's like, you know, every weekend you can probably find one if you want to drive around the country. No, that's, that's the truth. I can tell you that. Oh, man. I did two in a row, and that was a lot of traveling for me. <laughs> yeah. I've never managed to catch the London one because I've always sort of had exams or something on, but I will do. One day, I will go down. Yeah. No, that's uh, that's that's interesting. Um, when I was over there, because I was over in the UK this summer, I did notice that comic shops were um hard to find. <laughs> um, yeah, they were really hard to find. Like I live in quite a small town, and I'm lucky because there's like sort of an indoor market, and there's like just some dude yeah. is set up shop in this little market, and I don't know even where he gets his stuff from. He's just got this little stall with so like if I ever need anything, I can go to him and order it for me. Absolutely. Like, he knows me really well. That's awesome. Yeah. But, yeah, but there's no proper shop where I live at all. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, and, you know, it's it, funny, because it, when I was driving was, through, there's, there's there one, is, I see it from the store bus, and then when I get off, I'm like, I have no idea where that is, you know? And I'm kind of chicken to ask for directions or anything, and it was a, yeah. it was a couple miles back, I'm sure, you know, from where we got off. And so, it's kind of a bummer, because I really did want to check one out, but... What do you do? What yeah, do you do? no, the, the only, I think there's a place called Forbidden Planet in England, and mm. you'll find that sort of, I think there's six of them in like the major cities. Mm. Like in London, they have a mega store, which is actually really cool. It's like sort of a couple of stories, and it's got all sorts of gadgets and everything in it. Like that's, that's the best place to go if you want somewhere cool. They always have like exhibitions and stuff. That's pretty sweet. That's pretty sweet. But yeah, mm. other than that, you just, you have to be in the right places. Absolutely. So, um, do you. Absolutely. When you, so, uh, when you, you do when Dante, you, when you do Dante, and, and we, we call this we kind call of a, a, a pain at a pain time, because time, um, you do, the, you know, do parts of the story the each week. week, when you tackle when one of those, one of the, how long is it of a process just uh, for that? Um, it depends week by week. Some weeks, I find I can do it sort of in maybe three or four hours for the whole thing, because... I find a lot of the artwork, because I do a lot of it digitally, I could sort of just adjust it a bit and change backgrounds. But sometimes if I'm doing a panel that's totally new, I'll obviously I'll just draw it from scratch and ink it and then scan it in and then digitally edit it. Okay. And I've spent about 10 hours, I guess, is the maximum I've spent on one week. Mm. But it can, and, and I'm, I get a bit obsessive as well, because I'm doing it digitally. Sometimes I'm like, no, that pixel, that pixel's wrong. Just that little one. That, yeah, no, that, oh, that one. That one over there. I don't like that pixel either. And then <laughs> an hour later, I'm like, I have to stop now. This is getting ridiculous. I just have to stop. And I just put it down. <laughs> I'm like, just don't, don't go near it again. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Um, so we'll kind of just get into the book itself now. And um, I'm going to kind of... Got some, like, random, random questions for you here. I'm nitpicky. I... I go through it multiple times and I see detail and stuff, um, so we'll kind of just go through that. I wanted to review the cast first of all, um, and Dante, of course, being the star of the show. Um, what created him in your eye? Like, how did you develop him? Um, it's like, because honestly, sort of the basis of everything, like, I started reading Roman Dirge's Lenore. Yes. Love Roman. Um, it just... I just cracked me up. Mm. And it was, I've never really seen an art style like that before. Because I'd found like the art I'd done before. I'd never seen how I could apply my kind of art to a like, kind of comic thing. It just, it never really sort of rang for me in anything I'd read. And I saw it all and I was like, yeah, I could do something like that. That's definitely more my style. <laughs> and then I guess I just kind of, I came up with this sort of little creature that was like a bit pathetic and, you know, He's trying to be a vampire, but he just he hasn't quite got there yet because he's a bit young. Yeah. And it just kind of developed from there, and I was just sort of chatting with my fiancé about it one night, and I was, like, sort of explaining, oh, you know, and this crap and all, and, and sort of, as we saw recently, like, his, his vampire teeth aren't sharp, so he can't actually bite into anyone. 
And my fiance sat on the sofa laughing, and I'm like, if I can make him laugh, <laughs> I might be able to make some other people laugh. Exactly. So I've developed through that. That and is. Like, just... I, I wanted like a name that was, you know, a bit sort of stereotypical, like because obviously it's sort of this crazy vampire mother who decided she wanted a baby would have gone for something with the kind of name she wanted. So mm -hmm. I went with that. Dude, that is so awesome. No, it's, uh, you know, and right away when I started reading it, it, I, it totally clicked for me that it was, like, um, Lenore, which I have been reading just like crazy. Um, they released number six, I believe, of the newest run, and I died when I saw it on the shelf, because I'm like, they're still doing them, this is amazing! Yeah, um, they only come out, like, once every six months or something, uh, but it was just such a treat to see that, you know, so I, I, I just get all giddy every time I see it on the stage. Yeah, like, it's I such like, a fun book. It. Fun book. So let's talk about Rachel, the neighbor girl. <laughs> Rachel, Rachel cracks me up, first of all. Just the hair, how she is miscounting her jumps and her jump roping. And uh, that scene where he tries to <laughs> bite her with the <laughs> chomping and their doll thing. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just, I thought that was, I, I like it. I, I thought it was fun. I was just cracking up. Because she's like, you can let go of me now. <laughs> Halloween's not for ages. She's or... so sort of oblivious. Yeah. It's like, yeah, whatever. Go play with me. <laughs> <laughs> so with her then, is that kind of, did you kind of create her as kind of an offset, polar opposite kind of a character um, for to towards Dante? Yeah, yeah, kind of. Because, of course, like, Dante doesn't actually speak. like, And I don't think he will. I haven't really decided on it. I think he might occasionally kind of growl at people or things like that, but I don't think he's ever going to... So I needed to have a character that spoke a lot, <laughs> essentially. Because kind of, things just kind of happen to Dan, and he's not really in control of anything. He's just kind of sort of stuck there. So I kind of created her um, to kind of, yeah, to be talkative and sort of just the, the adorable little kid. I actually... She's named after my niece. Okay. Who, like... She was like that. She was just the sweetest little kid, and you couldn't shut her up ever. <laughs> <laughs> and that just—I just thought that would be the sort of the perfect character to stick in with him. Absolutely. Sort of, I definitely balance him out and like sort of have have because you need someone who's an age as well. It's like you know. I um, yeah. I mean, she. I mean, they just—it cracks me up as the story progresses. I wrote down some LOL moments that I'll, I'll get into later regarding her. Um, the next one I wanted to talk about was actually Eleanor, and that's Dante's mom. Uh, we see her symbolized as a pair of boots, um, or a comic bubble with no form as it comes off the left or the right. Kind of like a Charlie Brown teacher kind of feel to it. Yeah, I think I started off at the beginning, so I never kind of go above Dante's head, really, right. when I'm doing things, because I didn't... It's very easy, I found, to like, go off on a tangent with other characters. And I really didn't want it to be about his mom. Like, she's kind of like, you know, the one who brought him there. Yeah. And she's a bit nuts, obviously. She's not very typical vampire. <laughs> but I really wanted to make sure it focused sort of down. So that's like, the way I drew it was kind of like, she's there and, you know, she's important. But she's, it's kind of interesting. She's not really a main character. She's just kind of someone who can bring scenes together almost. To sort of be sort of the interlude. Or <laughs> exactly. And the thing that I got out of that actually was exactly that, you know, like you wanted to keep it at Dante's head level, you wanted that to keep that perspective. Um, it's all about this little world. Mm -hmm. So I, I definitely appreciate the, the the tale with that. So let's talk about two other prominent characters that we have in the book here. Any guesses as to who I'm referring to? <laughs> Creatures. Exactly. And we had a discussion when we chatted originally about our four-legged friends. So I am going to ask you, before we get into the characters themselves, is that kind of inspiration for you? Because, like, you have some pets. I do well. have some pets. I'm sure I can find one in here. <laughs> oh, a squeak. Oh, a little squeak. <laughs> this, this is a rat. It's actually called Mouse because it's small. That, oh, that's good. My fiancé named them. Then it looks like a mouse, so I'm calling it Mouse. <laughs> As you can see, she's pretty chilled out. It's pretty chill. So, yeah, I'll, I'm, I'm a bit of a sucker for small animals. Yeah. I don't know, so I have, I have four rats. Um, the other ones are sleeping in there somewhere. <laughs> and so, yeah, I just kind of, I really wanted to incorporate the, the, the small creatures into the smell. So, I mean, anything, I'm hamsters, bunnies, you name it, I'm all about them. So I started, and like, sort of, oh, it went, it went into the tagline as well, because I was trying to think of, like, sort of, the 
tagline to go with the comic because it's like, and I was I was talking over it with my fiance. I was saying, you know, I want it. I want to sort of start making them that sort of says, oh, it's a really scary thing. That but then when you think about it, it's not at all frightening. And it was actually my fiance that just went, say the tooth gerbil, and I was like, yes. yes! <laughs> I got really excited in Ginny and Girl. He was like, okay, yay. So, yeah, I, just, I totally stole that from my fiance. I was like, yep, I'm using that. It is now. And it, it just immediately just cracked me up straight away. So, yeah, we've got a little saber tooth gerbil in there. And I, I did. I sort of, I could have made my rat sit down. I was like, you stay there while I draw you. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't work too well, but I tried. <laughs> that is, that was the, that was probably the most prominent, like, it's just giggling at Dante when he's getting his hair cut and stuff. Like, it just, it cracks me up. Like, I, know, I thought that was fun. <laughs> But the other sassy character as well of note is going to be Rachel's hamster. And what is it? The Spear of Doom? Oh my gosh. Like, I just, I love how that thing cowers in fear. Because, like, she's like, I love you so much. And he's like, oh my goodness, help me. Um, then I, my niece has a little hamster. It's terrified of her. And honestly, after I drew in it, someone um, on my comic forum said to me that it, it rem the um, hamster reminded me of Stewie from Family Guy. Oh, totally. <laughs> the very small, cute, wants to destroy everybody character. <laughs> exactly. No, I, I definitely can see it. It's just, it's so funny. So, I mean, what you've done here, though, um, is, you know, you're doing this thing every week, but you're getting these characters that are just awesome, and it makes me at least want to keep checking it out, because it just, it cracks me up. Um... So, kudos to you on that. Um, the first LOL moment, I guess, <laughs> coming up here, would have been page 13 with da Dante spelling help with the blocks. <laughs> I thought that was just hilarious because they, they're playing, you know, at Rachel's house. And, oh, my goodness. He, <laughs> he doesn't speak, but I don't know. Like, you shall play with me. <laughs> exactly. Like, you said that he doesn't speak, but I don't know if he has to, because just his expressions of, oh my gosh, or um, spelling help with blocks. I mean, there's just so many little oddities like that that I love. Um, so I do like that you incorporate the detail into that. Um, alongside that is <laughs> the cupcake wallpaper. I I get such a charge out of that. Like, I... <laughs> yeah. I can I totally like, see it. Guys, something really girly and cute, and I was like... Cupcakes! Everybody loves cupcakes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the other thing I did like here would be how you open the story itself here, and that would be page, you know, one um, on the site, which would be Once Upon a Death. And uh, I, I always enjoy, I just saw Hotel Transylvania in theaters with my dad, um, and uh, I want to see Frank and Weenie from, you know, Tim Burton. Um, but, I, you know, I enjoy it when we take a terrifying time of the, time of the year, Halloween, or we take a terrifying concept, bringing the dead to life, etc., and we make it fun. And uh, I really, I think that you do a really, really, really good job with that, especially with that opening line and just with the material that I've seen so far, you know. And personally, you know, I'm kind of glad that we waited to have this visit so that way I could read more of it. Um, and I, you know, I really do think that you're doing a good job on that. Um, I'll give you the beer rating at the end of the show. But <laughs> it was, it was, it was very enjoyable to see. Um, so with that, uh, do you have any plans for the story? Any, um, exclusives or spoilers that... <laughs> well, honestly, I, gen I generally, like, have drawn a couple of weeks ahead when I go with it. Like, because, you know, you always get ill or something. It's like, I don't want to draw this week. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I have a couple weeks ahead, but so far I found it kind of... It just kind of flows as it is, and I haven't got like a big plan for it. There's, there's a little bit here and there I want to do. There's certain scenes that I've thought up, yeah. but I haven't quite tied into it yet. And well, yeah, it just kind of it seems to be taking itself places. Like I've never stopped and thought, oh, I don't know what to write anymore. I'm stuck. There's always something that's next. Yeah, that you want to try. I don't really yeah. know what it is till I get there. Yeah. <laughs> That's so, awesome. So yeah, it's just, it, just, it just kind of happens when it does, really. And that's I kind of the way to do it. in the future. Oh, what was it? Dante being able to hear animals. I'm thinking of a trip to a zoo or a farm <laughs> might be a good idea. <laughs> I can see him being very impressed about this. 
I'll, I'll totally check that out. That's awesome. <laughs> Um, right on. So you did mention that you're part of a community online. Um, let's kind of talk about web presence then. Um, with that, where can people find you, first of all? And I'll put links up in big, flashy letters and stuff. Um, yeah, the hosting site I use is called ComicFury.com, but the actual address of the comic is just Dante.TheComicSeries.com. Okay. It's quite simple. That's what sort of the thing behind it. Okay. Where it's so that's, that's what I use. But yeah, sort of, if anyone's like interested in, like, I found this Comic Fury site is, is brilliant because it facilitates, you know, you can design sort of your own page. You can do it from scratch, from HTML, or they have loads of templates that you can customise. So, and like, as well, you've got the community there. So if you're new, or if you just kind of say, oh, I don't know if this is better, or this is better like I've used before, I've put up sort of two panels that's similar, saying, you know, should I do it like this or like this? Mm -hmm. And you find loads of people sort of giving advice and telling you stuff. Yeah. So it is a really sort of good place for sort of people to come together. That's awesome. And uh, that's something I will definitely uh, put out there because uh, we, we, first of all, I love that people are DIY, do it yourself, you know, kind of thing. Let's, why do we have to rely on the people that put these books on the shelf every week? And they're great people, but I'm just saying, why not have more? Variety, awesomeness, and more expression. Um, oh, free. <laughs> <laughs> here's kind of a here's kind of a question for you. I mean, keep in mind I'm in the middle of nowhere out here in the breadbasket, right in the middle of the states. So my question for you is this, and just tell me if this is a fair statement or not. I the one thing I do appreciate about like you know visiting with yourself is that you do um, put kind of a different perspective on things just because of. Um, upbringing and your environment and stuff just because things are you know different over there when I was over there it wasn't like over here um, it's not terribly different um, but you know there are you know things that are different which I think is neat would you say that that's fair yeah I've been to America a fair few times and there are always differences I think there's a the thing that I noticed is probably a difference in attitude in people like people in America are more easily excited and enthusiastic about things British people are a lot more sort of composed I find. <laughs> yeah. so when I'm talking to people, American people, they'll be like, oh yeah, that's great, all about it. And someone in England will be like, oh yeah, that's nice. <laughs> it's like, it is, it's, it's, I find it easier to kind of excite Americans almost. Absolutely. Even stuff like Christmas, Halloween. In England, you've got, you've got a few lanterns. Maybe. In America, everyone's like, there are pumpkins everywhere and there's like hordes of children and it's <laughs> They just go so much over the top, and it's just fantastic. And yeah, England's just a bit more reserved, I think. Sure. What's it? So, what is a Halloween like over there? Is it is it pretty like? Do you guys do the door to door thing? Or yeah, is it... yeah. I think I think it's been dying down. Kind of real. I think a lot of the kids kind of they go to the houses they know, like the friends at school. They stop kind of going to all the strangers. Like when I was a kid, it was every door. We didn't oh, yeah. take it. We didn't like give us sweets. We yeah. demand sweets now. <laughs> but I think the kids now, they kind of, they, especially the ones I know, they kind of tend to just sort of go to their friends' houses. But, I mean, you do see a lot of the pumpkins and sort of people carving stuff. Okay. But, yeah, it's, it, I don't think it's as big a holiday, really, which is a shame because it's my favourite. Yeah. <laughs> I do. <laughs> In my house, there's always at least three pumpkins. <laughs> <laughs> all about the pumpkin carving. But last year, I did Jack. <laughs> Oh, nice! Good work. I'm I'm not biased or anything, but no, no, no. no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, what was uh, kind of Halloween then? What was your favorite costume that you did? Ooh, it was probably a couple of years ago. My very gay best friend, who's a makeup artist, and was mm. like, "I want to try some witch makeup. Will you Will you sit and let me do?" And I'm like, "Yeah, sure, whatever." So I went sort of the full like white face. Yeah, it was just crazy. I will send you the photo. Okay. <laughs> because it was really over the top. That's awesome. <laughs> and, like, he went as a zombie and like had the proper sort of prosthetic fleshy ugh, <laughs> kind of going on. <laughs> so, so yeah, it was de definitely my witch year. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I'm excited coming up. I'm prepping my uh, I'm gonna be Venom from Spider-Man the Bad Guy. 
Um, but I'm putting a corporate twist on it because I like wearing ties to work for no reason. We don't really have to, but so I'm, I bought a, they called it the gangster tie, which is this cheap white tie. And it was, you can tell they were folded in half when they were packaged, but I'm going to like shred it to bits, but enough so that it can still hang off my neck. Uh, white shirt and I'm going to spray paint the spider logo and then for the I'll send you a picture of what I want to do for the face But it's really cool how they did it because it looks like it's taking over your face and it's simple But it's it's awesome, and I am That's so excited cool. for that This so. year I promised to go out money to nephew so um, my sister was all like I really want to wear my wedding dress again because I'm never gonna use it yeah. So she's doing the whole wedding dress attacked by a vampire thing with bite necks. She's like you're gonna have to be my vampire. I'm like, sure, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> so yeah, I've got the proper sort of fangs that kind of be like fit to your teeth and everything. Oh, sure. Which is. That's awesome. Um, right on. Um, so yeah, send me that picture totally if, if you're okay with that. I'll put some of my costumes up to Robin from Batman. <laughs> <laughs> the boy wonder, yes. Oh gosh, I don't, I don't even remember. I was an undead florist passing out black roses. One year. Oh, that's cool. That was fun. Uh, the makeup on that was really cool. My friend does my makeup each year. She's very talented. Um, what was that last year? Oh, Chris Angel uh, has a Vegas show, a magician. Um, and so I, th my face was a handmade mask, and it was hand-painted, and it's really rather creepy. It's my cover photo on my Facebook page. Oh, um, yeah, that. Yeah. yeah, that was creepy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, and that picture was taken in the dark, and it just looks like I photoshopped it, and I didn't touch it at all. Like, it just, my like, camera's yeah, bad. I, yeah. I, would, <laughs> though, you know, I don't actually like horror that yeah. much. <laughs> like, I'm, I love sort of the stuff like, you know, your true blood and everything. Right. But put a horror movie in front of me, I'm like, no, I'm not watching it. So, <laughs> what do you... I, you know, I can I'm watch them. Right. Um, and where it came from, just, no, don't watch horror movies. I, could have, I went through the stage when I was young where, like, yeah, I'm cool, I'll sit through this horrible, oh, God, what am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> I, was so I get really it jumpy was, during them. It was when Saw 6 came out. Oh, yeah. Staying with a friend, and he was like, I know you don't like horror movies, and so we won't go, because all of his friends are going, and I felt bad, and I was like, oh, no, I'll be fine, I'll come with you, we can go. <laughs> I was in that cinema for ten minutes, and I left. Oh, my goodness. And <laughs> so I was like, I don't need it, I'm sorry, I don't like this. Those do push it. Those do push it. I agree. But, you know, I do like the Jigsaw character look. Um, yeah, see, I had him explain Saw to me, and I actually like the premise of it. Right. I just can't watch it because it's too scary. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. I'm kind of this... You know, and with the Freddies, the Jasons, and so forth, I, I can watch them, but what I really like is just the legacy of it, you know, because yeah. I saw a Freddy movie when I was really young, and that freaked me out for years, so I, I can appreciate that. I wouldn't go out of my way for it again, you know, but... Uh, so, absolutely. Oh, hey, I was going to ask you... I was going to ask you if I did okay on my shirt here. <laughs> I love it. Brilliant. You find so many things, like variations of that in England. Like, it's, it's kind of in fashion at the moment, and all the shops have just gone to town on it. Like, um, I thought about doing a t-shirt with keep calm and drink blood. <laughs> oh, dude, that'd be awesome. Um, no, I was going to ask you, too, because uh, in an email a while back I had mentioned I am thinking about doing, uh, we're doing another round of t-shirts coming up here. I kind of try to do it every hundred subscribers we get on YouTube, we'll do like another pair of shirts. Um, Tom usually draws them, but I did want to do one that said keep it comics and watch a comic book look. Um, and then for the crown it would be our three heads, a pair of shades upside down, and then a beer bottle on top. Oh, yeah, totally. Um, and then I was wondering if you would be interested in receiving one when we do those. Oh, yeah, definitely. Let me know. What shirt size would you be? Or do you, you don't have to say that on camera if you don't have to. Oh, sorry. See, then you're in America, I'm guessing small. Okay. <laughs> Honestly, I've ordered small t-shirts from America before, and they've okay. been, like, tense. Okay. I'm like, this isn't working. <laughs> so, definitely small. Okay, I gotcha. No, we'll, uh, because we're, we're, we're in the planning stages right now for that, so it'll be a while, but we can talk about the dress and all that later. Um, and you said you're moving anyways. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Well, um, with that, do you have anything that you wanted to say to the viewers? Um, I just can't, because I sort of, I've always loved comic books, but I never sort of 
thought I'd be able to do it myself because it seemed so many sort of blocks in the way. Like, I never thought about writing a webcomic. I always thought, like, oh, you know, you can't, because to get into sort of the whole publishing, it costs so much. And But I found that writing webcomics is sort of, it's really rewarding because you can sort of do it at your own pace. Like, if I miss a week, I could just put up, you know, sorry. And, like, you don't have to write a whole book and then go, oh, we published this week. You just kind of let it go as it wants. So I just say, you know, if people are interested in drawing and doing it, I'd really consider going down the webcomic route. And I know a lot of people want to make money out of it, which once you've established yourself in something like that and you're writing your story, mm. you can try that later. But it's definitely a great way to sort of put yourself out there and sort of show people what you can do. Absolutely. Well, definitely. Again, I will definitely take any information that you got regarding that because it is something where... There are people that watch the show that do this kind of stuff, that want to do this kind of stuff. So, ultimately, we're a community, and that's what we're about, is getting people I mean, in you the you do right see front. people, like, comment, where, like, just browsing through webcomics, it can be hit and miss. Some can be really <laughs> terrible and look like a three-year-old has done them. But some, honestly, you look at them and you're like, this could be published. Like, it's just beautiful artwork and brilliant stories, and you can sit in there going... I'm reading this for free and I feel kind of guilty. I feel like I should have been paying someone to let me do this. Because, yeah, but yeah you, you find fantastic artists on there. Absolutely. Well, and, my, you know, my final thing then for, for you would be, you know, if you are in talks with anyone on a regular basis and they do want to put, you know, their project out, send them my way. We'll talk shop. Um, cool. You know, um, absolutely. Because, you know, I like talking. <laughs> <laughs> different shades each time whatever you know but <laughs> no I do I do enjoy you know visiting with people and learning and uh, that's what we're about and uh, so ultimately I think that we have accomplished that today so per tradition um, I am actually drinking coffee right now so I am more than happy to give you the full six-pack rating um, for many reasons one I love you know Lenore-esque stuff two you have been fantastic to visit with um, today and then, you know, over the past few months, um, and then three, I just, I think that what you're doing is great, and I hope that you do continue to do that, um, if you do any spin-off series or something, you should totally <laughs> keep me in the know on that as well, um, but, you know, absolutely, keep pushing the Twitter, um, you know, just keep doing your thing, it's awesome, so, you do definitely get the whole six pack, so, cheers. Thank you. <laughs> Well, we'll wrap up the show here. To everyone in the UK, all of our viewers, uh, I do want to wish you guys a formal happy Halloween. Be safe. Um, have fun. Express yourself uh, in a responsible, civilized way for the most part, <laughs> depending on your party context. Um, <laughs> but uh, in all honesty, it's, it's a great time of the year. Um, and uh, I think that we can both agree that this is probably one of the sweetest times of the year. So... Oh, I'm yeah. pretty excited about it. Um, also, I did want to say kudos on the web I make them. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so, all right. Well, I will wrap up the show here, and uh, thank you again for stopping by. You, uh -huh. guys, you guys know how it goes from South Dakota all the way across the pond to the UK. John DeMand from A Comic Book Look, and you have a happy Halloween, and keep it coming.